Adam had always felt out of sync with the world around him. Even when he was with friends and family, he often sensed a part of himself that was hidden, locked away behind walls of doubt and uncertainty. His suburban life was predictable, his job in marketing, nights out with friends and casual dates that never really excited him. But deep down, he craved something different, something intense, maybe even a little dangerous. He could never quite figure out what that was until the day he met Jordan. It was a Friday evening, and Adam had just started a new job at a high-profile marketing firm. His co-workers, eager to welcome him, suggested a night out. They ended up at a downtown bar, the kind with dim lighting, jazz music playing softly in the background, and an exclusive vibe that made Adam feel like he was stepping into a different world. That's when he first saw Jordan. Jordan was everything Adam was not. He was tall, muscular, and had a kind of raw masculinity that made people look his way. He had an air of dominance, an alpha male vibe that commanded the room's attention. He was in the middle of a group, laughing with a confident, almost cocky grin. His dark eyes scanned the bar, taking it all in with a sense of ownership. When his gaze landed on Adam, it felt like a magnet had locked onto his soul. Adam's pulse quickened, and for the first time, he felt a longing that was both terrifying and exciting. Who's that? Adam asked his colleague, trying to sound casual, even though his heart was pounding. Oh, that's Jordan. He's a regular here. Owns a few gyms in the city. Kind of a big deal around here. And, word of warning, he's known for being a bit intense. His colleague said with a smirk. Adam couldn't stop staring. There was something about Jordan that stirred something deep inside him. A mix of fear and excitement. The way Jordan moved, talked, and even smiled screamed power. And Adam felt drawn to it like a moth to a flame. The night went on, but Adam's mind kept drifting back to Jordan. He found himself glancing in Jordan's direction more times than he could count hoping for just one more look, one more chance to catch his eye. It was almost closing time when Jordan made his move. Adam felt a tap on his shoulder, and he turned to see Jordan standing there, closer than he expected. He could smell the faint scent of cologne mixed with something earthy, like a forest after rain. Hey, you're new here, right? Jordan's voice was deep, a rumble that seemed to vibrate through Adam's whole body. Yeah. Just started working nearby. I'm Adam. He replied, trying to keep his voice steady. Jordan, he said, offering his hand. His grip was firm, his palm warm against Adam's. Why don't you join me for a drink? I've got a private booth over there. Adam hesitated, remembering the warning from his colleague. But the pull of Jordan's presence was too strong. He nodded, following Jordan to a secluded corner of the bar away from everyone else's eyes. The booth was darker, more private. They sat close, their knees almost touching. As they talked, Adam found himself opening up more than he expected, sharing thoughts and dreams he usually kept locked away. Jordan listened carefully, his eyes never leaving Adam's face. There was a deep intensity in Jordan's gaze like he was trying to look right into Adam's soul. You know, Jordan said, I can see it in you. That hunger, that need for something more. It's in your eyes. Adam's breath caught in his throat. What do you mean? I've seen it before. In guys who play it safe, who keep their desires bottled up. But deep down, they want something more raw. Something only a real man can give them. Jordan's hand brushed against Adam's sending a jolt of electricity through him. Let me show you what you've been missing. Before Adam could even think about what was happening, Jordan leaned in and kissed him. The kiss was strong, demanding, and Adam found himself kissing back with a passion he didn't know he had. It was like a dam had burst, releasing a wave of feelings and desires that had been building up for years. They pulled away, both breathing heavily. Adam's mind was spinning. He knew this was risky, that Jordan was the kind of man who could take over his life, 
leaving nothing but emptiness behind. But right then, Adam didn't care. He wanted to feel alive, to take the risk Jordan was offering, even if it meant getting burned. The night ended with Adam agreeing to go back to Jordan's apartment. It was a sleek, modern space with big windows that overlooked the city. The moment they stepped inside, Jordan's lips were on his again, and this time, there was no holding back. Clothes were tossed aside, breathless gasps filled the room, and Adam felt himself getting lost in a whirlwind of sensations. Jordan's hands were rough and commanding as they moved over Adam's body. There was no gentle romance, no soft touches, just pure, raw passion. Jordan pushed Adam onto the bed, climbing on top of him, his eyes dark with desire. You're mine tonight. Jordan growled, his voice low and rough. Adam shivered, a thrill running through him at the possessiveness in Jordan's tone. The night became a blur of heated kisses, tangled bodies, and whispered commands. Adam had never felt anything like it before. Every touch from Jordan sent waves of pleasure through him, and he gave in completely to the storm of desire that Jordan sparked in him. As the sun started to rise, casting a soft light through the curtains, Adam lay beside Jordan, his body aching but satisfied in a way he'd never felt. He looked over at Jordan, who was already half asleep, a slight smirk on his lips. For a moment, Adam let himself believe that maybe, just maybe, this could be more than just a night of passion. Maybe Jordan saw something in him worth holding on to. But as he began to drift off to sleep, a small voice in the back of his mind reminded him of his colleague's warning. Jordan was intense, dominating, and maybe even dangerous. Adam knew he was playing with fire. The real question was, how long could he avoid getting burned? The days that followed felt like a fever dream. Adam found himself going back to Jordan over and over, like an addict craving a fix. Their encounters were wild, intense, and always left Adam wanting more. He started spending nights at Jordan's apartment, losing track of time in the whirlwind of lust and power that Jordan unleashed in him. It was intoxicating like nothing Adam had ever felt before. He felt alive, every nerve in his body on fire. But as time went on, Adam started to notice things, small things at first, then more unsettling. Jordan's possessiveness began to feel overwhelming. The way he controlled Adam's choices, from what he wore to where they went, even who he talked to, started to feel stifling. Adam tried to ignore it, convincing himself it was just Jordan's way of showing he cared. But the more he gave in, the more Jordan seemed to tighten his grip, like a vice slowly closing around him. One night, after a particularly intense encounter, they lay tangled in the sheets. Jordan's arm was draped possessively over Adam's chest. The room was filled with the sound of their breathing, the night outside holding its breath. Why don't you move in with me? Jordan's voice broke the silence, a casual suggestion that felt more like a command. Adam hesitated. I don't know, Jordan. It feels a bit fast, don't you think? Jordan turned, his eyes darkening. What's there to think about? You're already spending most nights here. This way we can be together all the time. You wouldn't have to deal with those annoying roommates of yours. Adam bit his lip. The idea of being with Jordan all the time was tempting, but something inside told him it wasn't a good idea. I just need some space, Jordan. A little time to think. Jordan's grip on him tightened, his fingers pressing into Adam's skin. What's there to think about, Adam? Are you having second thoughts? His voice was calm, but there was an edge to it, a warning. Adam felt a knot tighten in his stomach. He tried to smile, to ease the tension. No, no second thoughts. Just, maybe let's not rush things? Jordan's eyes bore into his, searching for something. Then, as quickly as the tension had built, it disappeared. Jordan's expression softened. 
and he brushed a thumb over Adam's lips. All right, take your time. Just remember, you're mine, Adam, and I don't share what's mine. Adam nodded, trying to hide the unease he felt. But those words echoed in his mind long after Jordan had fallen asleep. Weeks passed, and Adam's life started to revolve around Jordan. His friends noticed he wasn't around as much, and his colleagues whispered about how different he seemed. But Adam was too caught up in Jordan's world to care. He was living in a blur of lust and desire, each day blending into the next. One evening, Adam decided to go out with his friends, something he hadn't done in a while. Jordan was out of town on business, and Adam was glad to have a chance to relax and reconnect with the people he'd been neglecting. They went to a club, loud and full of life, with familiar faces and laughter all around. For the first time in weeks, Adam felt like himself again. As the night went on, Adam noticed a man across the bar watching him. He was tall, with a friendly smile and warm eyes. The man walked over and started a conversation. His name was Chris, and he was charming, making Adam laugh with his jokes and laid-back attitude. It was innocent, just two people talking in a crowded bar. But when Adam felt his phone buzz, he knew it wasn't innocent to Jordan. He looked down to see a message from Jordan. Where are you? Adam felt a chill run down his spine. He hadn't told Jordan he was going out. He hadn't thought he needed to. He quickly typed a reply, telling Jordan he was with friends, and put his phone away, trying to focus on talking to Chris. But his phone buzzed again. This time it was a call. Adam excused himself and stepped outside into the cool night air. Hey Jordan, Adam said, try to sound casual. Who's Chris? Jordan's voice was low and threatening. Adam froze. How do you know about Chris? I have my ways, Adam. Now tell me, why are you talking to another man? Adam's heart raced. He's just a friend, Jordan. We're just talking. Nothing's happening. Get out of there now and come home or I'll make you regret it. The threat was clear and Adam felt a cold dread settle over him. He knew Jordan meant it. He'd seen Jordan's temper before. The way his eyes darkened, his voice dropped to a low growl. Adam didn't want to find out what Jordan would do if he didn't listen. I'll be right there, Adam whispered, ending the call. He went back inside, made a quick excuse to his friends, and left. As he walked through the city streets, he felt trapped like a bird in a cage. He had thought he was falling in love with Jordan, but now he wasn't sure if it was love or fear that kept him coming back.